Hi everyone. So we're back in lockdown. We've got to just work with what we can. So today's video, we're going to finish up last week's subject, which was escaping bad positions. And the final one is Neon Belly. Neon Belly is a little different to all the other escaping positions because uh, with like, uh, jump on your back for a second, Mason. Side control, I'm pinning Mason down and also I've got you know, my limbs either side of Mason to stop his movement, so he can't move that much at all. The same as mount. I got my body weight on top, and I got my legs either side um, compressing Mason to stop the movement. The same with um, back. You know, I got my limbs around Mason, wedging around Mason. So I've got my chest neck and my limbs wedging around as well. Um, and also north south. Again, you know. I've got my weight, but I've also got my limbs around. Today is Neon Belly. Jump on Neon Belly, Mason. It's a little bit different. So if Mason goes here, there's nothing really around my body. It's more about the weight on my body. So you can create movement with Neon Belly. You can move, but you have got a lot of excessive weight Okay, now uh, let's move it a little bit more this way, just better for the camera. Firstly, in the, the game, the sport of jiu-jitsu, you do get awarded for this position. Mason will get two points if he holds it for three seconds. Making sure, lifts this knee off the mat. If that knee's on the floor, no points. He comes up, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, three seconds, he gets two points. You get two points for this position because it is a very dominating position. Obviously, it is brilliant for a street fight scenario. Probably won't even explain. Mason could really hurt me with strikes, and you know it's going to be hard for me to punch him back from this position. The most my punches will be very weak. So it's a very dominating position in the game of martial arts. Okay, and it's also why would it someone want to do neon belly in, in the game of jiu-jitsu? Now we're talking gi jiu-jitsu right now. Uh, it's very easy for Mason to access chokes. He's got the distance to dig his hands in and go. So it does allow uh, a lot of dip. There's so many different ways to choke with your hands when you posture it up like this. Um, so, you know, it, it is a great position for Mason if you know what to do from here, especially because he can just float around quite easily and keep it moving. He, he's good. So if the first one we've got to be careful of, a common temptation here is to push the knee. Now, pushing the knee gives Mason a good underhook. The second that happens, he's clever enough to step over and he puts me straight into an armbar. All right? So, pushing the knee isn't a great idea. The other, the other um, one I'm hoping for if I push the knee is a Kimura or a Kimura trap. He reaches over, falls off, and now I'm in the trap Kimura where now, you know, if I sit up, he takes my back and all different things or he, he can finish the Kimura from there. It's, it's bad to push the knee. You have to set it up if you're going to push the knee. There's two main ways to escape this position, okay? So the first one, um, yeah, we can do it this side first, okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here, I, Mason's got all his weight on me and this is where he can start to find chokes. What I want to do is set one foot. This one's going to be my bridger. This one's going to be my knee up. So even just doing that, Mason's already trying to brace himself. What I want to do is force his hands to the mat. So I do a bridge and a bump. His hands have to go to the floor. Now what I want to do is move my hip and push his knee forward. So I go to this position here. I'll show you the other side of the set. Now once I'm here, his knee's off. What I want to make sure though, his knee does not come back over the top. So when I'm kneeing forward, I'm on my side here. Now I suck my elbow in, scissor my legs and come up. Now there's many different ways we can deal with this. You can grab, put them down. You can play all the half guard games of, you know, sitting back under and, you know, they get the whizzer and all different spots, but you want, you can knead them forward and get that hand to the mat. So let's just keep on the same side, but other angle. So when I'm here, look, my bridging leg, my kneeing leg, knees are just on the back of his hip. I'm sort of kneeing out like here on his hip here. Boom. But don't just knee, you've got a bridge as well. 
So as you knee, you go forward. Boom. Now once I do this, I whip my legs to the side. I want Mason's knee to be off. I don't want to turn in and drive your knee across. And he drives across the mount. You've got to be very cautious of that. So when you knee, it's like, and see, it's up at my chest now. So I'm here. So if he tries to drive across, it's like, no. And I've got this in the back here. Now don't leave this arm out. This arm out, we spoke about this a lot. Heisting your back off the floor. You don't want this arm out. You don't want Mason to grab it either, lift. Because then you get a little stuck here. You've got to retract this bottom elbow in. As you thread the needle or scissor your legs to come up. Now from here, there's many different ways we can deal with it. Most common, control the leg, grab the other leg, and drive them over. But once you come up with that single leg, you know, there's a, there's a lot of options you've got there. So you want their hands off you. The other great way, way um, will asset that kneeing in the butt adds is they're not choking you. They're trying to choke you. Kneeing them forward, they're, they've got to brace up with their hands. Otherwise, they're just going to, you know, hit their face on the mat. So before they get that hands in that collar, you're kneeing them forward. Boom. Kneeing them forward. Boom. Okay. So that's one option. The other option, which I really do like this one, particularly in a, um, like a, a jiu-jitsu match environment, not a self-defense environment, is um, controlling this foot. So not pushing the knee with the vulnerable arm, what I do is grab the sole of the foot here and I bridge up to make my body flat as I grab the leg. So I'm basically just putting his knee, his foot in between my legs. So once that happens, just rotate a little bit so you face the camera. Once that happens, now I can start to push this leg and reach around this leg. Because for Mason to Komora trap me or arm bar me, he has to come around the top. He can't because I've got his foot. So it eliminates the, the threat of that. So once I get that foot, let's start again. Once I go, now I'm not just pushing the foot into my half guard, I bridge to make my body flat. See? Then I can put it into between my legs. Now I push his knee and end up on my side. Now from here, make sure you pull this elbow in. Start to come up. And then again, many different things we can do from here. Popping out the back and so forth. So putting that foot into, you know, sort of a half guard variation is a great idea. But make sure you don't just try and jam the foot in with your body bent their foot will get jammed on your hip. So if you just stay like this, and Mason knows what he's doing, he's hiding his foot here, it just gets jammed. Let's turn the camera a little bit. So you, you can't just rely on that. You have to set your feet and bridge up. Then it slips through nice. Now, this knee can't go, he can't arm by me, because I've got his foot. That's when I'm pushing his knee over to that side. Now I can start to attack. If I make the mate a big mistake of letting that leg come across, or Mason's a lot bigger and stronger, let's come back up, and that leg drives across to here. Okay, so now he has what uh, you know you call the three-quarter mount. Rotate the camera. So I do not want to end up here, but it's not such a big problem. I've still got his foot. What I've got to make sure though, I don't turn towards the foot, expose my back. Yeah? So go back. That top arm is a frame across here. Now I want to start to get to like a good half guard. So I move my hip towards the knee, use my frame, put it in, lock, and then start playing my open guard. So once again, if you make the mistake of letting him drive that knee across, you get the foot in. By the way, not pushing yet until you get that foot. Yeah, so you get that foot in. Now you don't want that knee to drive across, but Mason's already driving across. Uh-oh, okay, okay, I've still got it. So he doesn't have mount points, he doesn't get his four points to mount, because I've still got that foot. Now, I want to capture the knee. So I move my hip forward to lift the knee up, thread it through, and then I start to play some form of half guard. You can switch and put a hook in, start to elevate to an open guard. You could do many things from there, okay? So, in short, two options. Option one, Knee them, boom, get the hands on the mat. Ready? Option one, we're here. Don't push yet. That's the, that's the, big, that's the most biggest temptation. Do not do it. 
Okay, so Mason may be like trying to choke me out. I'm like, nope. Forward. Now, I shift my hip. Keeping his knee on this side of my body. Retract my elbow. Coming up. And in some form of attack here. That back heist, you know, getting your back up off on the floor, coming up to turf, some sort of like a turtle position. So knee. Knee him in the hip. Or get the foot. And I'll be honest, this is the one I tend to use more. Yeah, so I'm not grabbing that yet, giving that underhook away. Not yet. I get the foot first. So I need to do that because Mason's hiding his foot around my hip. He's clever. So I do a bridge, get the foot in. Yeah, throw it through. Now I can start to push because that arm bar's gone. So I push here. Once I'm on my side, I'm playing, you know, it's a variation of a half guard. Um, many different options here. But knee forward, suck your elbow in, coming up, we're good. If your partner drives that knee across your hip, we do not want that to happen, but it can. So you've bridged, gotten that foot in. Mason's driven it across, okay. Now, use your forearm, move your hip, boom. Get it to some sort of half guard. Now, get your guard back and start attacking. There's two, well that, that's gonna be the basics of how to uh, you know, get out of Neon Valley. Um, you know, with the, the, the way the, the sport of Jiu Jitsu is going, you do not see Neon Valley all that option, particularly in the no gear competition. Um, because I feel if someone goes to Neon Valley in no gi when there's a lot of leg locks, there's open for leg entanglement exchanges. Yeah, so um, they invert and stuff from there. So there's a lot of ways when you're on the bottom to start entangling the legs. So if Mason <coughs> is at Neon Valley here, you'll see people starting to thread through starting some form of leg entanglement of attacks. Yeah? Um, very common uh, you start to see that if people go no neon belly and someone's standing above you they just start inverting and you know there's that whole world of endlessness of leg attacks so uh you know it's not that common in uh high level no gi neon belly but um in the gi when you've got the anchor and they start pulling up on the arms and threading in for cross chokes you see neon belly still at high level competition but no gi uh, lately, I don't, I don't see it often at all. Um, but obviously, self-defense, it's a great thing too. So you need to know how to escape it. You need to know how to deal with it. Um, and those two options there are the, the ones that are, that'll get you through. So um, that sort of concludes the escaping bad positions uh, for the last fortnight. Um, next week uh, is open guard. But uh, you know we're still in lockdown, so we'll, we'll have to see when we're we're back at training. But if we're extended this lockdown, which may happen, we'll we'll be adding more videos in. So um, you know, just try and stay positive, everyone. Try and keep fit any way you can. There's always training to do. I say that all the time. Even if um, you know in martial arts, you're, you're always going to have times where you can't get on the mat, whether it's because the government say we can't train, or whether it's because you're injured or you're away or whatever. There's always training to be done. You know it, you can do yoga, you can do strength training, you can run, you can study Jiu Jitsu videos, you can watch videos like this, you can do visualization, you can do breathing exercises, you can do hot cold therapy, there's so many things you can do. Don't get lazy because we're told we've got to stay home. Keep training, keep positive, keep your martial arts improving. And I'll see you soon on the mat. Cheers.